Hi everybody, welcome to Gunpla TV at the 53rd All Japan Plastic Model and Hobby Show. And you can see we are hitting Bandai first because there's some big news and also some big kits. And you can see them right there. We're gonna go check out the Sasabi. All right, everybody, here it is. The Master Grade Sasabi version Ka, which is coming out in December. Merry Christmas, everybody. Here's a sneak peek at your holiday season. This thing is absolutely huge. It looks like the Shinanju on steroids, which kind of makes sense because it's the pr uh, precursor to the Shinanju. But you can see that it's got a lot of the same de design elements in the feet, as well as the hips and the, uh, the armor colors there. But uh, it's important to note that it looks like this guy is going to be able to open up a little bit, much like the uh, Virgin Cotton New Gundam. And if you look at the, uh, the top, the pods at the top there, you can see the, the hatch is open. So those pods will be able to shoot out. Also, it's going to have the new type hands, but they look like they're a little larger than the ones that have been packaged with the Jesta and the new and the 3.0. And uh, you can see by looking at the size of this box here, they've got a display of the box. It's massive, it's huge. Like this is the biggest Verka ever, save maybe the, the perfect grade of the wing, which might have been considered a virgin ka. But uh, this guy's going to retail for less than 10,000 yen. But I think that's actually a good deal considering the amount of plastic they have. Uh, here they actually have the Virgin Ka. Again, they've got it out of the glass display. So they, they've got it grouped together with the new Gundam. You can see kind of a size comparison there. And just look how big this thing is. Like, I can't believe it. Even though I'm staring at it, I still can't believe how big it is. And uh, you can see that if you look at the shoulder here, it looks like it's going to be able to open up these kind of areas here. This is closed on this side, but open on this side. Similar to the shoulders on the new Gundam when it goes into its... Uh, uh, cycle frame mode kind of thing as well uh, while we're looking at this display let's look up here and see the new Gundam yeah that's the new Gundam but that is the titanium finish this titanium finish is due to come out in January so a month after you spend a fortune on your Sasabi you can fork over the same amount and more for the new Gundam now I was a little skeptical when I heard that they were doing a, a titanium because I thought well the kit looks good enough as it is why would they do titanium but just looking in here, you can see the, the, like the gold plating here. You know, gone is that kind of, in some cases, gaudy yellow. Yellow often doesn't look good on model kits, but putting the gold in here and it's the tiny titanium finish, it's looking awesome. I think it might be one of the best titanium finish kits I've seen so far. So I'll keep, be keeping an eye on this one come January. Also in the display of the Bandai, the, the big thing is the RG Strike Freedom. You can see they've got one all done up here on display. And you can see that the Dragoons are going to be the Mechie Plating Gold. So that's a pleasant surprise, similar to what they did with the Perfect Grade, but also like what they did with the Perfect Grade, it looks like a lot of the frame is gonna be that, that gold, that lame gold we call it, we've seen on the Astray uh, gold frame, on Matsumina, and on other gold frame kits. But as we showed with the, the Astray, it's easy enough to paint an HG frame. This, this will be an RG frame, so you can probably still paint it the same way, but you gotta be a little more careful but it still looks like it's going to be a solid kit. I mean, look at what all the markings on. It looks beautiful. And in some ways, it looks better than the Perfect Grade. Uh, here's the uh, Strike Freedom outside of its box here. And uh, you can see it's got his huge gun to the right here. And you can see that uh, you can put the guns together, just like the Perfect Grade. You can make this uh, long monster gun. The Dragoons will fold down. It's looking pretty tight. And you can see that they got the classic uh, box art here. Here's the box art for the RG Strike Freedom, which is just as great as the other RGs. Best box art in the group, I think. And then uh, they've got the other uh, sim uh, similar RGs on display, dating back to the Freedom here. Check out this diorama from uh, Gundam Thunderbolt. You can see that they've got the uh, the FA uh, RX-782 there, as well as the big gun. And uh, last episode of Gump TV, we showed the prototype shots of the big gun. But you can see now they got the built model. It's actually got a lot of color in there. Now, I don't know if the finished product is gonna have all these kind of little gold areas. Maybe that's painted or maybe they'll come with stickers, but it does look pretty solid. But actually over here, they've got uh, the models. Let's look over here. This is our first look at actual Thunderbolt kits uh, as they're ready to go. Last time we looked at the prototypes. Here is the full armor Gundam. You can see it's coming with these extra shields and that huge backpack on the back. I really like the colors. It looks really good. And uh, next to that, you can see here's the big gun. Now it's looking the same as the one in the diorama with these little gold parts. So maybe we'll be lucky. 
and we'll have some gold in this box. But even so, that, that gun is gonna be a lot of fun to build. And last of the three in the Thunderbolt series is the Jim. You can see it's got these arms extending from its backpack to hold these shields so it can carry its weapons while at the same time being covered by the shields. I'm not much of a gym fan, but I do think that uh, this kind of design does look really cool. And the colors definitely work. All right, you can see that we're up to System Weapon 5 now. System Weapon 5 is going to come with the giant Gatling gun, which you can make in different variations. Very cool. I actually think it looks awesome. And uh, also you get the EFF long shield, which of course can be made in their different variations. You can see all the parts that go into the shield and all the parts that go into the Gatling gun. Uh, down here we have Gundam Deco Volume 16. We talked about this briefly last time. Uh, they're putting out decals for a lot of the new kits that are coming out and a lot of the old kits that would have been released maybe up to a year ago. So you're going to be able to get your hands on uh, decals if you didn't like the stickers. We do have more builder's parts. You can see that they're making the MS pipe here. So it's similar to what you see maybe on Zaku and Goof and stuff like that. As well as there's more spikes. They're going to put out more spikes. So this is spike number two. All right, you can see that they're showing off what they're going to have at the Gunplay Expo, which we will be at next month. So what do they have? Well, you can see that they got uh, titanium shards, master exactly. That was actually a Kara Hobby uh, item, as well as the titanium finish Banshee Norn was a, a Kara Hobby event. That's coming back. The new stuff, though, look look at the Destiny in the back there. That orange one, I love that version of the, of the uh, Destiny, and it's coming out in RG which is going to be awesome. As well, we get a clear version of the uh, Amatsumina uh, gold frame. You're going to be able to see some of that gold there. As well as a clear version of the RG Zeta. Oh, that's kind of cool. And also a metallic finish of the Sasabi BB Gundam. And not pictured here, but I saw it in their flyer that they were handing out. There's going to be a clear version of the Master Grade Full Armor Unicorn. That thing is going to be enormous. But you'll really be able to get in there and see the cycle frame. But that's if you're willing to spend, you know, the full armor money on it. But this is, uh, of course, Gente items, so you can't really see them outside of Japan. But we still want to show you because they're awesome. All right, this is the newest HG Zaku, and they're doing uh, big red here. Last, you can see they've got uh, Johnny Ridden, and it looks like he's going to come with all his markings. It looks pretty good, as well. You know, the different color spikes here. I'm kind of tempted to try and turn this display, but I don't think it moves. He's going to have the standard uh, Zaku uh, machine gun that we're all used to. And you can see that he fits really well into the group with the, uh, the Zaku Black TriStar. Uh, a lot of people prefer this one. I'm kind of a Shin Matsunaga fan, the white guy over here. But uh, you can't go wrong with either of the three, or all three in this case of HG, because they're very inexpensive. Here's the new Nemo. It's the unicorn desert color version. I kind of like these colors. A little bit kind of bland, but uh, Nemo, and if you are aware, he's usually a, it's very bright green, so I kind of think this works out well for him. You can see he's looking similar to Jim, grunt suit type, but uh, it's nice to see the Nemo getting some love. I think he's one of the neglected suits sometimes. Okay, let's show you some shots of the uh, Strike Rouge and the Otori backpack. We talked about this on the last episode of Gumbo TV, but we, of course, hadn't put any of the markings on. But you can see, I believe they've got the water slides on in the case of this kit, and it's looking really, really good. And uh, they've got him on an action base, of course, so he can be in his flying poses. And uh, they've really done a good finish on this kit. It looks really, really nice. All right, new item alert, new item alert. You can see in February, we're going to have HG Silver Bullet. Now this is from the MSV or Mobile Suit Variations. And right now we're in prototype stage, so we get no color. But you can see that this is going to be a very large boy. And it's going to retail for around 2,200 yen. And uh, looking at that backpack, it looks like it's going to come with a significantly sized uh, weapon underneath there, as well as a little rifle there. It'll be interesting to see um, as the shots start to come out, just what the colors are going to be like. All right, here we see we got the Endless Waltz Master Grade kits, and they all look really good, don't they? You know what? Maybe we're seeing the best one right now. Check that out. It is the Wing Zero Proto or the Proto EW, I guess you could call it. And you can see uh, he's got him in, his, in the uh, transformation, the flight mode, as well as his normal mobile suit mode. He looks awesome, the proportions look really good. I love how the backpack holds up here. You can hold both weapons. These weapons will combine to make it, you know, the, the, the huge gun. But look at that box art. 
That is some of the best box art I've seen in a long time. Normally I get excited for seed box art, but this wing, wing gun and proto box art is awesome. All right, here we have a display of just various master grades. So you can see they got just different series, different uh, years. Holy crap, what's that? Let's have a closer look. Oh my God, it is a prototype for a master grade Gundam X. Now, people have been asking, you know, when are we gonna see anything from Gundam X in master grade form? And usually my answer was, I don't know, we're looking at uh, seed, we're looking at wing, we're doing uh, new Gundams and version cars and Sasabis. But it looks like we are going to see, come January, an actual Gundam X in 1100 scale in Master Grade. And the prototype is actually looking really, really hot. You can see they've got that backpack, he's loaded down. He's gonna come with that huge gun he comes with and uh, as well as some shorter one here. Now it's tough to see, you know, what they're gonna do for color and parts, but you can see down here they've got the image with the color. So we can look forward to these colors on here. Although it might be interesting to see how they get this blue stripe onto the top here because I can't see an extra part for that. Maybe it'll be applied after as a, a part over top or a sticker. It's tough to say, but so far the, the proportions on the photo look really good. All right, one of my favorite suits. You know, I always go on about the, uh, the Shenanjins and whatnot, but I actually think that the V Gundam is awesome. And I'm glad to see that they're doing the HD version of it. And it's gonna come, you know, with its beam effect parts. And it's also gonna have a core fighter. Here he is down at the bottom here. So uh, the proportions look really good. Of course it's HD, so you're not gonna get what we come to expect from the Master Grade Victory Gundam, but it still looks really good. And speaking of looking really good, look at the F-91. A lot of fans love the F-91, even though it only appeared in one movie, which is kind of half a movie. But uh, the, the F-91 in, in 1144 scale now looks fantastic. I think this kit looks really good. He's got his bazooka. These parts will splay out on the shoulders like we know from the Master Grade and the, uh, the weapons will swing out from underneath the arms from the back there, extend, just like the Master Grade kit. It's actually uh, looking really, really good. And uh, a pleasant surprise right beside there. Holy cow, what's this? It is the V2, Victory 2 Gundam. Now, I didn't know this was coming. You know, people have been clamoring for a Master Grade version of this. It's always high up on the wish list. We have never seen one. And now we're actually seeing an HD version of it. It is coming with the parts as well. It is coming with a core fighter. And uh, you can see it's looking really solid. I love it. And I hope that this means that we're gonna see uh, Master Grade in the future because uh, sometimes the HDs predate the Master Grades. Moving on. This isn't new, but it is new. This is the Ale Strike and uh, they're redoing it. You know, they redid the Ale Strike RM in Master Grade form with the new proportions and it looked really good. And I guess they felt that the old HG wasn't cutting it. So we're getting a new HG. So it's gonna, they're talking about uh, in this Japanese that you can get the MS Rashi, you know, Choku pose or whatever. You can get the kind of mid-flight pose on this HG kit and backpack that maybe you couldn't get on the previous one. And I gotta say the proportions look really good. I kind of like what they've done with the shield here. And uh, if you're a fan of C, then yeah, keep your eye on the, uh, the upcoming Ale Strike. Hey, we were just talking about you. This is actually the old Ale Strike. And uh, we were mentioned, hey, they're making a new one. They actually have this on display because they're talking about Gundam Gumpa Builders here, the Gumpa Build Fighters. And uh, you can see that they have the Build Strike Gundam full package. And they're using parts from the Strike and they're making it with that backpack of the Build Strike Gundam. And it does look pretty good for an HG kit. You know, HG kits are getting better and better and it's looking pretty solid, but let's move along here. You can see that they've got the Black TriStar Zaku, which we looked at earlier. And now they've got a, the Zaku Amazing, which incorporates that, that amazing backpack, as well as parts for the legs and whatnot. Looks pretty good. I kind of like what they're doing with the, the other stuff here. You can see they've got a Gundam X, which they just announced an MG4. <laughs> but they've also got the Gundam X Mao right beside there. We're not going to see that in any kind of other series anytime soon. So it's good that they're kind of bringing Gundam X into the HG line as well. And the Fennis, which I think is cool. You know, it's got the asymmetrical look to the wings. I think it's awesome. Uh, right next to the newest HG AC wing Gundam. They're comparing them there. Very similar, lots of shared parts, but it looks like the shoulders are completely new and that beam effect parts. And maybe the wings also, the attachments are going to be different, of course. Look, going further, a lot of people are Mark II fans. I am one of them. Here's the uh, the AUG, and beside that, they have the 
gun and build Mark II. You can see it's going to have a completely different backpack. It's sharing similar lower body parts, but uh, the torso is completely different. Shoulders look the same, but it is coming with uh, different rifles and different weapons. Looks pretty solid. And uh, continuing on here, we do have the Astray Red Frame, the new one with the flight unit. And beside there is the Astray Sengoku Astray. You can see he's all fighting up Musha style here. He's got his samurai on. Looks like he's coming with swords mounted onto his shoulders, as well as those new funky knee designs. I actually like them. And the feet kind of look like they've been designed to represent uh, Japanese footwear. I'm going to look into this more later when I get some time with this kid, but it does look kind of cool. And uh, last but not least in this segment, how can we forget the bear guy? Now the old bear guy from the previous Gumpa Builders was cute and probably might have been the most popular kit from that series and still kind of remains popular. Next to that is Bear Guy 3. Now Bear Guy 3 is yellow. He's got a different face, but it's worth noting that you can swap out that face. You can put an angry face on there, similar to what you can do with a lot of like the Bandai SH figure arts figures and whatnot. It's actually kind of cool. Looks like they got an entire section for the Gun and Breaker. Now it's based off a video game. You can see they've actually got this set up here. They got four PS Vitas out there. You can go and you can uh, get your Vita on. And check this out. We talked about this when I went to the uh, Tokyo Game Show. I wasn't supposed to take pictures, but I don't see a sign saying that right here. Here is the, the Vita for the, uh, the Gundam. You can see it's got the different scales on there. And you can see the, the, the box is, it is coming with two unique figures. So if you get your hands on a, a Gundam Vita, you can get your hands on these uh, exclusive figures as well. It's not the Night Gundam, and it's not the Unicorn, but it's the Night Unicorn Gundam. This is actually kind of cool, you know, uh, making this kind of uh, Sengoku Warrior look with suits. A lot of times hit or miss, but I think they've kind of done really well with the Unicorn. If you look over to the, the one on the side here, they've actually got the Unicorn horn on there, and it looks like it can transform into this Unicorn mode, similar to the other SD Unicorn. But uh, there it is, and it's got the, uh, the FA green frame in there. And oh, what are these parts for? It says, what are these parts hiding? Well, you know, we're going to have to find that out after, I guess. It looks like they're going to be able to go on the front here. It actually looks quite, kind of cool. But there is one other new SD kit we've got coming kind of here. You can see we've got the, uh, what do they call it? Kusei Gundam? Or the, it's just like three. This, is, this kanji means three. So it's tough to say how they pronounce it, but they, they call it Kusei Gundam. Anyway, they've got this progression starting from the new and the high new into the unicorn and into the new one. I mean, this, this guy, he's looking pretty massive. It's going to take a, take a lot of parts. He's actually more expensive than the other ones in the series, but you can see that the size of the parts. There's a lot more plastic involved. He's kind of pretty cool looking. All right, we're at the LBX section now, and we're looking at the riding armor. Now, these are quite unique, especially for uh, Plamo and the LBX in general, you don't, you don't get these all the time. But the idea is that your LBX fighting suit can sit in a bigger fighting suit. Now, uh, previous, one, previous ones they've already got built here, but there's a new one coming in January. It is the Arn version Genok. And uh, it looks like he's gonna come with lots of markings. He's pretty sizable. They've actually got one here with, a, with an LBX kit in it. It's kind of cool if you're into LBX. They always seem to be branching out. I mean, you can see that they've got these riding Sosas as well. These are actually kind of controlled. They take batteries and they can kind of be used to fight. Uh, we haven't actually shown them on the show yet because uh, I don't play with RC so much. Uh, and uh, just to the right here, they've got uh, just a whole bunch of the LBX kits that they've released. It's actually cool to see them all together somewhat because uh, when you see them all stacked like this, you realize just how many kits Bandai's released from LBX. It's actually quite impressive. They release sometimes two or three a month. All right, at the last show we went to, which is Shizuoka, we showed the Evangelion kits, but they weren't built. They were, well, they're built, but only prototypes. Now we can actually see that they are all built, all ready to go. They look kind of cool. And look, uh, they've even kind of half them here. They've, they've kit bashed, and we got a half pink, half red uh, duo here. It actually looks kind of cool. But uh, the new stuff in this seg uh, segment down here, you can see that they're kind of doing the figure eye six again. Now we've seen the... Uh, the Barnaby Brooks and the uh, Wild Tiger on the Double Chaser. This is not new, but they're still going forward and they're gonna make a new figure I six from this series, Tiger and Bunny. And it's gonna be the Barnaby Brooks Jr. 
style to. So as you can see, I don't know what the difference are is in color or whatnot, but uh, you can see that they got the prototype here. And come January, uh, you're going to be able to see this guy. And I guess uh, going off of this image here, we can kind of see how they're going to put it together. It still looks a little similar to the previous one for me. I'm not a follower of this anime, so I can't tell you the differences, but I'm sure it's going to look really good when they finally put it out. All right, here's the Valve Rave section. And you can see that they've got, uh, you know, the Hito down here. These, the bottom row, these have all been released, as well as the green guy up here. Yeah, he's also come out. Uh, this blue one, the Wolf, Wolf Valve Rave. Uh, this guy is going to, he's called the Hyochiba. And he's going to be coming out this October. We're going to see him at the end of this month. And November's release, uh, how do we pronounce this guy? Oh geez, he you maybe. It's hard to read that kanji. Uh, you can see he's got purple, he's got lots of markings, which you've come to expect. But they've just announced a new one, and we're gonna go over here and we're gonna look at it's the Valve Rave Hito, we know this model, but this is the full impact. And you can see that he comes loaded with lots of extra stuff. Look at those feet as well. That's like that's like crazy. Now I haven't seen this episode of the anime. I don't know what happened to this guy to uh, make him full impact. But uh, I'm sure it was pretty cool because look how awesome that guy looks. All right, speaking of Tiger and Bunny, we just talked about those. There's a prototype figure eyes six. This is actually, uh, what do they call these things? The perfect model, the 12 inch PM or perfect model. You can see that this looks pretty perfect. I guess it's similar to metal build, except it looks bigger. Now, uh, the important thing to note here when you're looking at the Wild Tiger and the Barnaby Brooks Jr. is that uh, these things, uh, they're perfectly priced. Like, if you want this, you're going to be paying a premium for your perfect price. These things, I think, are 25,000 yen a piece. Add in the tax and it's 28,000 yen and change. I mean, I can understand it when you look at the amount of detail involved. And it's nice to see Bandai uh, doing something other than Gundam in this kind of scale and uh, detail. But man, you've got to be a huge fan of these. Unfortunately for Bandai, there's a lot of fans. Speaking of lots of money, what you're looking at is a Robot Damashi Kshatriya. You know, I personally never thought that we would see this. And there's probably a reason for that, because it's so big. And it's priced accordingly. If you look at this thing, this thing is priced at 13,000 yen. I mean, they've got uh, other Robot Damashis here that you can see. They're 5,000 yen. Uh, the uh, Hainu, which is coming out in January, I believe. If you're looking at 5,500 yen, I think it's worth it because the Hainu is loaded. It comes with that backpack. It's one of my favorite suits as well. But the Kshatriya, yeah, it, it more than doubles the price of maybe the nearest uh, Robot Tamashi, and there's a reason for that. All right, we're in luck. Normally we say we can't show you metal builds because they're too expensive to take out of the box and they always sell out. However, look at this. Here's the Metal Build Destiny all decked out here in display. Of course, it's behind glass. We can't really get too close. Well, I gotta say, this is the best metal build I've ever seen. Like, look at the detail in the, the skirt. If you zoom in on the skirt there, you can see it's, it's got that uh, deco that kind of just slashes across. It looks awesome. And the wings, with the color separation, I think there's like two or three different colors on the wings. It looks amazing. More than amazing, actually. I'm gonna have to look into Metal Build for myself. All right, Yamato fans, rejoice. Check this out. Just in time for Christmas, tell your wives. Uh, here's the newest Yamato. And this thing is 1,500 scale. So even so, even at that scale, it's still massive. Like this thing is big. And uh, it comes with a price tag that reflects that. I'm not gonna lie, it's 10,000 yen. But when you look at all the detail involved in this kit, it's phenomenal. Like you've got the gun turrets, those who all turn. You've got the uh, command center at the top there. And uh, just the amount of things that come on this kit. Now, Ryan, he's built a Yamato before and uh, he's probably got more experience with it than I do. But I'm sure he'll tell you that that thing does not compare to this thing at all. This is like all new tooling. They've got a special display for it. They even have uh, the designer actually uh, giving his speech every two hours telling you what he did. And uh, just a quick glance up at the screen here. Unfortunately, it's not working right now. When I first uh, got here, you can manipulate the uh, CAD and actually look at the entire rendering of the model and see all the details. Now, it's kind of frozen, so they had to stop it. But I got to say, there's a lot of detail on this kit that you're not even aware of until you see it. Recognize this? Yeah, it's the 30th anniversary of Macross, and you can see it's got all the markings on there. Now we showed the Arcadia uh, figure, which was awesome, but this uh, model kit's actually looking pretty solid. 
and you're not going to have to worry about trying to transform it because this just comes in the, the fighter mode. Uh, right next to that though, we do have a, a new kit that's due in December. This is actually the YF19 with fast pack and fold booster. And it's actually what they call Tamago Hikoki. So they're kind of scaling it down to look like, uh, you know, those egg shaped planes. It's actually really cool. And uh, even next to them, they got the other, another 30th anniversary. Smaller scale, this is 172nd. But I believe it's supposed to come out at the end of this year. And uh, if you don't want to go for the, the larger scale, you can always go pick up a smaller scale. Looks just as good. Speaking of Tamago Hikoki, yeah, we just showed one of those uh, coming out in model kit form, but here we go. He, they are doing the airplanes again. You can see we got a Boeing 747-400. And we also have a VC-25. What is this? Air Force One. That's right, Air Force One. Now, can you picture the President of the United States of America flying around in a plane that looks like that? Maybe with their having budget problems, they might have to go small. Uh, we got some video up here explaining what they did with the, the latest uh, Captain Harlock film. Now, for those who don't know, it's all CG, but it's just amazing the amount of effort that went into this for a Japanese CGI anime. It's it's unbelievable. And uh, to correspond with that, they're starting to show uh, some of the uh, Captain Harlock associated ships. So we've got the third ship, the variant, the Arcadia. This is the attack enhanced type, and uh, it's actually looking pretty cool there. That the huge weapon on the front there. It's got the the skull on the front, which you can see on the illustration here which uh, has a very dramatic scene in the movie, which uh, we're seeing in the trailers of right here. So uh, rejoice there, uh, Harlock fans and uh, Tetsudo 999. You can see that uh, Hasegawa's got you covered. All right, also in Hasegawa, we are in the virtual on section. You can see coming in December, we have a new virtual on, this big green guy. You know, I'm not gonna embarrass myself and try to read his name, but just look at the name placards that they've got here. I'm, okay, Akushichi Byoe. Kage Kyo Hayashi. There you go, I read it. Good thing they have Furigana on there. If you look in here, I only saw this. And I was like, oh, oh I'm, I'm screwed. But uh, that's, a, that's looking pretty cool. We don't see very many green virtual on. But actually, the one I wanted to see, this is what I came to see, is the Temjin here. We talked about this in the show when we saw it. It's a 747J. And uh, when, I talk, when I talked about it, we only had a prototype shot. And I said, you know, I bet you there is going to be a lot of markings on this kit. Well, let's uh, move over to the cartograph they got here and just look at the size of that. It appears to me, Ryan, and I might be wrong, but there is a lot of markings on this kit. And uh, I think it's justified if you look at all the detail that's going in here. You know, it might be time to bring a virtual on on the show. Check out this massive thing. Now, this is actually not for sale, but we want to show it to you because it's huge. Like, here's my, here's my hand. Uh, yeah, you're pretty big. Uh, this is the Mac K section of Hasegawa, and they do have some new stuff to announce. And you can see that they are putting out the MK44. This is coming uh, early next year, so we're not going to see it in time for Christmas. But this is 120 scale as well, and uh, it's looking uh, kind of cool, you know. Looks uh, kind of lumpy. But uh, I think that uh, Mac K, they always have this kind of, you know, look to them. Very organic, but yet not organic. And the MK44 kind of fits that bill really, really well. Okay, Macross fans, now's your time. We're at the Hasegawa booth, and looking down here, we've got a VF25F-S Messiah Macross F. Now, this is due to come out in November, and you can see the, the different colors here. we got the, the dark color and the lighter color. Uh, one thing I noticed when this thing's spinning around is it looks very shiny, and I thought, well, maybe it's just top-coated because they got the decals and everything on it. But looking at the runners here, uh, you can see they've laid out all the runners. These runners are really shiny, and I'm wondering if this is the type of finish we are going to see on the actual release when it launches in November. It's worth uh, paying attention to this because I'm not aware of uh, Macross previously putting out these kind of shiny kits. And uh, if I'm wrong about that, please let me know because uh, I'd be interested to know just uh, how they do this. Okay, now we're at the Kota Buki booth and we are actually looking at the standalone complex kit. And we, uh, Ryan talked about this uh, when we had it on the show when we put up the pre-orders. You can see that uh, it's looking kind of cool. It's going to have these movable claws in the front here. And it's gonna movable legs as well as I can on the back there. It's a very unique design, I think. Reminds me of something I'd see from a Final Fantasy. Uh, moving on, we've got some Muv Love. Can't leave the Muv Love alone, and they're giving Muv Love some love. Now, this is a November release, the EF2000. I think they're starting to name them after uh, um, military planes. So we got an EF2000. And the next to that, you got an F22A. It's a Raptor, right? This doesn't look like any Raptor I've ever seen. 
This is coming actually in January of 2014. 6,000 yen, you're getting a lot of plastic in there, and it's all stealthy because it's, you know, a Raptor. Now, this is uh, Super Robot Wars. We don't normally talk about this on the show because they seem to be releasing uh, not as regular as, you know, other normal series, but you can see that they've actually got this uh, kind of a prototype here of the Keja Terubin Rita. Um, again, my pronunciation is probably crappy, but uh, I kind of like what I'm seeing in the details on the shoulders with the red and whatnot. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any re uh, release date announced, but it's one to keep an eye on for sure. All right, here's the frame arm section. We showed these on the show way back when, but they're still putting them out. I'm glad to see. Now we've got some uh, 2014 releases here. We've got the SA-16, as they call it. We got uh, here this purple head guy, the YSX24RDNE. This guy's coming out actually in November, and he looks pretty crazy with that big claw there. Moving on, we're going to look at prototypes. So this is the <laughs> NSG-ZO-E. This is also a 2014 model kit. I think I'm liking the kind of medieval knight look they've got there. A little bit LBX, but check out the guy beside it. The NSG ZOD, the Magashiki, and he's all Japanese samurai style, and I am digging it big time because any gun and model kit, that c or plastic model kit in general, that comes with a giant sword like that is one kit that I need to have a serious look at. And uh, frame arms, even though we haven't really looked at them since we did the episode, have uh, become better and better as they progress. So we might have to have another look at these guys. Still a Kodobuki with some D-style. And you thought we were talking, looking at a scope dog, but we are looking at a scope dog, but it is not normal, it is D-style. And uh, I would have to say that a D-style scope dog looks almost the same. But uh, moving on, you can see we've got some other ones here. The Gyao Ga Ga or whatever, Gyao Gai Ga series. is really popular in Japan. D-style has put out a few of them. And now they're getting this monster dude, as well as the uh, Shin Geta one. This is coming out in D-Style as well. It's good to see the Shin Geta guys getting some uh, D-Style love. And next to that, Ryan, what we talked about on the show just last week, the Anubis. This guy is all done up. They put all the markings and they've added all the trimming detail to him. And doesn't he look crazy? Like, it looks awesome. I'm still a big Zone of Enders fan, so seeing a full-built uh, Anubis really, uh, really crumbles my cookie. Check this out. Now, we showed the, uh, the Zoids, the new Zoids, the dinosaur. We showed it on the last episode and we said, this guy's gonna be big. And you know what? Now we can find out for sure just how big it's gonna be. Now, check him out. He's fully built here. You can see they've got stacks of runners. They're actually building it while at the show. So they're gonna have a, a second one here. But just look at the size of this guy. Can you, you can see how tall he's gonna stand. You know, I don't have super big hands, but I'm a manly guy. But just look how big that thing is. And uh, sure, it stands tall, but look at the length of the tail as well. And keep in mind that that tail is gonna be able to move. It's coming in different sections. I think this kit is one that's gonna take you several weeks to actually put together. Hidden away in the corner of the uh, Kotobuki booth, there's a gun head. Now this is the uh, gun head 2025 special edition. And uh, I guess they're putting out a special edition DVD as well. And uh, it's, it's cool to see the gun head because uh, you don't normally see it around. Models come up few and far between. We did talk about one on the show way back when, but it's nice to see them all um, done up here. It's got a lot of like weathering touches on there, it looks like. He does look really good. I'll admit that. And I might, uh, might be paying more attention to this guy when he releases uh, next month. Here at the Bandai booth, and not only they're showing off their Gunpara and all their other cool model stuff, but uh, they're showing off a lot of their figures and toys. And here we've got uh, some upcoming releases in their uh, SH Monster Arts series. Uh, they started off with Godzilla's and Godzilla-related stuff. Uh, they did a King Kong, Peter Jackson's Kong, and you're checking it out right now. This is Alien Warrior from the first AVP movie uh, that came out. And like all their uh, SH Monster Arts figures, extremely articulated and extremely detailed, as you can see here. Alien Warrior, of course, lends itself very well to articulation because it's all kind of articulated and jointed anyway, so it looks really cool. And uh, yeah, so this is coming out in January, actually, in the SH Monster Arts series. And to go with this guy, I mean, you can't have an alien versus predator without a predator. Now, this is not from the same film. This is from uh, AVP, Alien versus Predator Requiem. And this is Predator Wolf, you know, the kind of cleaner predator. If you've seen the movie, he comes back and tries to take care of things. Uh, also highly detailed. Uh, he's got his helmet on here, but he's got some uh, different faces that you can take the helmet off. You see he's got this wide open mouth, this kind of closed mouth. 
He's got his alien killing stuff all over there. Uh, and again, this is also this was coming out in February, so the aliens coming out in January, and we're getting Predator Wolf in February. Uh, again, highly articulated and highly detailed. So some great new stuff uh, in the SH Monster Arts series from Bandai.